Good evening, everybody. This is Cinnamon Noir. And this is the Ramen Shaman. Welcome to one of my favorite new games that is not actually a new game because it came out six years ago. But Rayman Legends? Yeah, don't mind that. That was just a steam overlay coming on. A little annoying. As anyone who has played Ubisoft games knows, it's a little annoying to get through the disc because you need to use Uplay. Yeah, oh well. But it I worked mean, out alright for me. Not too many troubles. My obsession with the, um... Pretty much all the Souls games came several years behind the curve, so... One mm. century. One entire century. So, yeah, the story of this game is that there pretty much is not a story. <laughs> kind of similar to Rayman Origins. Rayman Origins was a little more structured. This game has more of a lighthearted feel to it. Of a mysterious... But as in the last game, the Bubble Dreamer, who's sort of a thinly veiled version of the game's author, um, is talking about the dangerous things that come out of dreams, which has been a recurring Rayman staple. Rayman has always actually been a creature of dreams, even from the very beginning. I guess that makes sense. And the whole idea of the, you know, electoons being representative of good dreams, and when they get corrupted, it turns it into a bad dream. They really went all out with that in Rayman 3, but... Go. Mm -hmm. Quickly, oh, and speaking of Rayman 3, that's Murphy off to the right. I don't know if you've ever played a game with Murphy in it, Greg, but... For anyone out there who has, you'll be happy to know that he does not talk in this game. Oh, God. He was kind of funny in Rayman 3, but not enough to justify his presence. Oh, wow. In this game, he actually has more of a mechanical reason for being here, as we'll see. But yeah, so... These bad magicians are around... Who are also teensies, oddly, like the other guys you rescue. But the bad teensy magician was a character from Rayman Origins, who has now come back, only now there's many of him. So, you know, typical sequel. That's odd. So Murphy's actually controlled throughout the game with Y, and you can press Y to wake Rayman up. Oh, God. And Murphy warns Rayman, using the power of mime, that, uh, you know, teensies... And such are being abused, so we need to save them all. This is a central mechanic of the game, as we've just seen, is rescuing teensies. Interesting. There are ten of them in each level. Two are in separate, sort of, um, mini-game areas. And the other eight are in the world it's... Or, I should say, in the level itself. Have you ever played Rayman Origins? I have not. Okay, so maybe I need to explain a few things. Um, Rayman's acquired. controls... Sorry, what? I see he's acquired a down smash. Yeah, that's right. That was in Rayman Origins, too. It was not in the original Rayman games. Uh, no. Not even in Rayman 3, as far as I remember. So yeah, here's the first secret room we can get into. A staple of platformers. Been around at least since Donkey Kong Country, and probably earlier. Okay. So these things are lums. Lums are the basic currency of this game. They get you all sorts of nice stuff, and they sort of represent your score. Um, in Rayman Origins, the way these Lum bonuses would work is that you would pick up a King Lum, as it was called. It would, it would make all the others worth more for a brief time. So you're encouraged to collect them all quickly. This game works kind of differently. In this one, there'll be lines of Lums that start with a purple one. That one is worth two, and if you collect it before the others, uh, then the next one in line will turn purple as well. So if you collect all of them, you get a bonus. If at any point you collect one of the ones that's not purple... Then, all the others refer to being regular lumps and are worth less. Ah. So it encourages you, instead of being quick, to be careful. Which is interesting. Mm. Uh, and this is showing off Murphy's abilities. We can use Murphy to interact with items in the background that Rayman can't. One of the things he can do is tickle enemies that Rayman can't fight. Thus, incapacitating them. Tickling Very enemies is just... Genius? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, so one of the interesting things about this game is that in many areas you need to use Murphy simultaneously with Rayman. So you need to get sort of a rhythm worked out for how to press the the uh, Y uh -huh. and A buttons with a good rhythm. Rhythm is very big in this game as it was in Origins. Um, in fact, we'll see at one point that rhythm is supremely important in some levels of this game. Mm. But for right now, it's not that big a deal. One thing that is not supremely important in this game is combat. Almost all enemies are incredibly easy to deal with. Yeah. The focus is not on enemies, but on platforming. 
and to a certain extent on puzzles. As with most platformers, actually. Well, sure. Anyway, Murphy can cut these ropes with Y, but you have to be very careful here, because if you cut both of these ropes, you'll give the Teensy a little dunk in the lava. Ooh. And he doesn't appreciate that. You can't save yeah. him once that happens. So yeah, one thing the game introduces fairly early on is that you shouldn't go overboard with Murphy. You have to use him judiciously. Mm. Here he's pulling up platforms for us to use. Very helpful. And this is interesting. At this point he can rotate stuff. Which we are soon going to use in one of the first very elaborate puzzle rooms. Ooh. So in this one Murphy's rotating an entire spike gauntlet for us to go through. Alarming. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the rotating room from um, Castle Super Castlevania 4. I don't know if you've ever seen that. But in that area, in that game, there's points where you have to hang from something with your whip, and the uh -huh. room will rotate around you. You don't get to control it in that game, so this is a lot easier. But it made me think of something from Super Meat Boy, actually. Hmm. Trying to think of what you mean, but I'm not sure I know. Like not a specific thing, just like the kind of thing you'd see there. Yeah, I guess you're right. Super Moldy. Meat Boy didn't really emphasize um, changing the environment, though. That's True. almost like a Super Monkey Ball kind of thing. Yeah, I guess Meat Boy was more about avoiding the environment. Yeah. So one thing I love about this game is there's the quantity of secrets. With all this hidden stuff, there's lots of, you know, hidden areas to explore. Oh, I really screwed myself here. <laughs> Luckily, since these ghost guys keep spawning infinitely, they can get me out of it yeah. so I can jump on their heads. They are a little difficult to deal with if you're just jumping through, but you can hit them to get them out of the way. Can they Make a little attack gap you for yourself. If you touch them, if they if you touch them, you'll take damage. But they don't technically mm -hmm. attack you. They're just damaging. There we go. <laughs> and uh, that noise lets you know that the level is finished. Fair enough. In fact, ending the level with a yeah is a very old tradition in Rayman. The very first one ended it that way. Although I, I think, think in that game it was supposed to be Rayman saying it. I think in the second one had him yelling something like that too. Like. It, that was him talking his fakey language, like, Boca de Bo! Yeah, that was a very was... strange thing. Rayman 2 was very odd. <laughs> it, it's funny because my... As a kid, that was the only Rayman game I had. Yeah. It was 2, so it's got it's given me a very weird perspective on the whole series. Yeah. It People was... who've played Rayman Origins will remember that when you do a good job in the level, you are rewarded with Disco, and that is kept in this. <laughs> you get the gold cup. Yeah. Which means you need to get 600 lums. Actually, a lot easier in this game to do that in most levels than it was to get the highest amount of lums in Origins. I would say, in general, this game is easier than Origins. Which I appreciate, because uh -huh. Origins could be pretty tough. But it's still a fun challenge. Anyway, if you get the second highest level of lums, which is 450 most of them, you get a lucky ticket. One of the weird, vaguely microtransaction-feeling parts of this game. It's not a microtransaction. You don't pay for it, but kind of feels like that kind of engagement. Yeah, I know what you mean. Which is weird, but at the same time, I don't resent the game for it because, it, you know, it's not real microtransactions. It's just sort of faking it, which really? is almost fun. Yeah, feeling like an arcade machine in game is not bad at all. Yeah, I don't mind that. Like, there's some elements of WarioWare games that are like that. Mm hmm. But I think this game is very creative, as we'll see. You don't get to see as much of that in the first level, because that's the way things go. But soon we'll see, this game gets very inventive. It's probably yeah. as creative with new ideas as Rayman Origins was. It's just there's a little less of the novelty factor there. And also the tone. You know, Rayman Origins, even though it was kind of goofy, managed to have sort of an epic tone. This game feels a little bit more cheesy and fun. Uh-huh. But I can appreciate that. It's mixing things up. So, this uh, room, you have to remember which of these were platforms you would land on and which were spikes. Ooh. It helps that both of the hand ones are spikes, so that's an easy thing to remember. Uh huh. This is an easy version of this puzzle. There'll be harder versions of it later on. Oh, dear. I also like how when the spike platforms come out, you hear a voice laughing at you. Like, sinisterly. That seems just a bit cruel. Oh, it's, it's cool. It's fun. Anyway, we saved the uh, Teensy Queen there. The two special Teensies you save are a Queen and a King in every level. Hmm. 
It's interesting, they look very similar, and in fact, the cries they make in the overworld are identical. So that sometimes the king will sound like a queen, and sometimes the queen will sound like a king. But when you see them up close, you can see, like, the Teensy Queen has some lipstick on, and she has, like, orange hair. Ah. Uh. Though really, all Teensies look pretty much alike. You remember the Teensies from Rayman 2, right? Oh, yeah! That was the first game where they were introduced, and <laughs> they were just as silly in that game. I love, you remember this, I hope, that in Rayman 2 there were four teensies at the end of each level and they all thought they were the king. Oh, God. So they would pass the crown back and forth. That was the, um, oh yeah, and the first one they just all, like, all fighting. Yep. I actually oh, really okay. love teensies. They're one of my favorite parts of Rayman lore. And I think Mecha Lancel definitely agrees with me. You know the one thing I kind of, I miss in, um, Rayman games since then? Uh-huh. Is the sort of fake, like, simlish language they were speaking. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Although, I don't entirely mind it going away. <laughs> it mm. could get a little annoying sometimes. I never liked Glowbox's voice. Oh, yeah. Rayman was alright and the fairies were okay, but... I thought the way they did the fairies in Origins was pretty cool. But, um... They don't really have fairies in this game. We'll see soon, but they have a different kind of uh, ah. fantasy race. A bit curious and a bit, um... I don't know how to put it gamey, but we'll see that. Mm -hmm. I would describe this game in general as being very gamey, and that's not a diss, because it knows what it is and it revels in it, and it's very good fair. at it. And also, the fact that it's gamey doesn't really take away from the atmosphere. It still feels extremely creative. And uh -huh. this is a world I can get into even though it's very clearly artificial, if that makes any sense. I think so. This first world, I don't know if you saw it, was called Teensies in Trouble. It's sort of the least themed of all of them. If anything, the theme is just castles and dungeons. Ah. Which is different. There was nothing like this in the first, um, in, in Rayman Origins, which is kind of like the first game in a series now, since this is a lot like it. Mm -hmm. But that's probably why they put it first, because it's so stylistically different. Later levels do resemble the way that, uh... Origins was, especially the third level, which is almost exactly the same as the third level from Origins. Uh -huh. But again, I'm anticipating. <laughs> I like these uh, little flowers that will pull you up along a rope, but they're actually trying to eat you. Oh. That's There's actually something kind of like... Sorry, say that again? Oh Isn't yeah, you're right. Thing? You're right, those things are from Half-Life. Barnacles. Isn't that what they're called? I think so. Oh, and anyway, there's also something like that in Donkey Kong Country, the original one, where you would have ropes that would draw you up and down along them. Mm -hmm. If anything, I would say, besides other Rayman games, the biggest influence this has is from Donkey Kong Country. Ah. It and Donkey Kong Country Returns feel almost like spiritual cousins. So these plant creatures, I really do not like at all. Uh, when you get near them, they'll start aggroing, and pretty soon they'll attack you. Okay. I didn't realize this, because it looks like they'll just slice you, but actually, uh -huh. once they hit you once, um, if you persist, they will grab you and put you in the maw of the actual creature. Those things aren't individual creatures, they're all just tentacles of a larger one. Huh. It's kind of gross, actually. We'll see later me get eaten by one of them, and it's not pretty. Ooh. Um, this game preserves one thing from Origins, which is, you mentioned Super Meat Boy earlier, it's kind of like that. You can have a heart, which will take one hit for you, but in uh -huh. general, you can't take a lot of hits. When you die, you puff up into a balloon and explode, and you, oh, start, you start very close to where you are. There's a lot of checkpoints in this game, hmm. basically from the beginning of the room. And that's one of the things that makes this game very accessible and fun to play, is that you never really feel like you're harshly punished for experimenting or for doing something that leads to a death. Uh-huh. Which I think is just the right way to do it. I yeah. mean, obviously, there's many ways to make a game. But I definitely appreciate this style more than, say, the Mario style. So the game will sometimes pull you out of where you are to show you that you have unlocked something, which is one thing I don't appreciate. You know, I'd like that yeah. to be left to me, but... I can see why that, why that would be a pain in the ass, generally having control taken away from you like that. Fortunately, it's a very small world, so it never takes long to get back to where you were. Mm -hmm. The game does seem a little in love with its own upgrade system, though. Mm. Like, it's obsessive about those unlocks, and it keeps reminding you if you haven't looked at things. Which is weird. Very different from the style Origins took, where Origins was much more low-key. 
and it felt more like an artificial world than like a game. Mm -hmm. I am not a big fan of those farting mushrooms. Ew. But you get lums out of them, so I attack them anyway. Just about anything you do in this game will get you lums. Unlike Origins, where rescuing the things in cages just got you one of those things, um, here rescuing Teensies also gets you lums. Oh, yeah. That does seem better. I guess. It makes sense. So yeah, this is the queen. Kinda hard to tell, but she has a different crown, and if you look closely, you can see lipstick. Oh. It's funny, I don't know if there were ever female Teensies before this game. Hmm, good question. The Teensies in Rayman 2 were definitely all male. Yeah. And the Teensies in Rayman 3, while very silly, I think were also all male. Yeah, probably. Did you ever play Rayman 3? Not much. No. Rayman 3 I actually like a lot, because even though mechanically it's not a very deep game, like, it has its problems, I still just love the humor in it, and I think it's a very unique kind of game. Mm -hmm. It's a funnier game than any of the other Rayman games, in my opinion, but that doesn't totally count for much. Rayman's always been very whimsical, but that doesn't mean it's True. funny. Very few games actually manage to be funny. Mikhail Ansel's not bad at it, though. You know, Beyond Good and Evil is a pretty funny game. Oh, yeah. They play kind of an emotional balancing act with that. A lot of humor, but also a lot of tension and disturbing stuff. Mm -hmm. This game is nothing like that. There is never any tension in Rayman. No. Very rarely a story arc. Instead, it's just it's the worlds you go through that really create the, the feeling of being there. There isn't a story. And it doesn't need one. True enough. You know, Mario games don't have a story either. The conventions of platformers do make it a little difficult to tell a story. True. Unless you use cutscenes. Oh man, I almost distracted from my favorite song in this entire game. Which is? This, what's oh. playing right now. It's just so adventurous and heroic, I love it. It sounds like an Indiana Jones song. Yeah, I know. Isn't it great? Rayman Origins had a fit. Rayman Origins had a fantastic soundtrack, but if anything, I think this game's soundtrack is better. Definitely one of the standout features of this game is its music. Fair enough. I'm not sure who composes the music. I'm pretty sure it was the same person as in Origins. But whoever it is, Mikel Ansel's just assembled, uh, or did assemble, a heck of a team to make this game, I have to say. He's one of few creators I can think of who has never made a game I didn't like that I played. Mm. Though I'm, I'm nervous about Beyond Good and Evil 2, to be honest. <laughs> they first announced it, like, what, three years ago at this point? It's had a long it's development cycle. It's been announced multiple times throughout the years. Yeah, maybe they don't know what to do with it. I certainly wouldn't if I were them. My opinion is it'll come out or it won't. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And I'm not holding I wouldn't call it an opinion. I would call it a tautology. <laughs> I mean, well, you have to be correct when you take a position like that. I'm not gonna hold my breath. Yeah, I understand that. I'll That's a position. For... I'll believe, or, or rather, I'll believe it's coming out when it yeah. friggin' comes out. I agree. Don't get your hopes up. It's it's dangerous to do that. Mm -hmm. That was actually the first video I did in my own channel was telling people not to be hyped for Beyond Good and Evil <laughs> Two. True. Feels like a long time ago now. And my latest one was a 30-minute rebuttal of a Matthew Matosis video. I've come a long way. I think we all have. Mm. Anyway, so this is the first area where you rescue the equivalent of fairies in this game. These are shorter levels, and they revolve around really tight platforming challenges. Which is interesting. In the first game, there were what were called tricky treasure levels, where you had to chase a treasure chest that was running away from you all over the place. These levels are similar to that, but you're not following anything. Instead, you're actually the one being chased. Oh god. By this wall of fire. There's actually a... Um... There's a level like this in, um... The first Wario game. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know what oh, you mean. Although, it, it's supposed to be a wall of lava, but the graphics are kind of weird, so it looks like oil. <laughs> yeah. No, one thing I like about this particular one is you barely even have to jump in this. It's really just more about making sure that the obstacles in Rayman's path are out of it. Yeah. Oh, I screw up there. And I decide I have to go back into the flames. 
Because I can't let that guy burn. There we go. Actually, you know what? There is a boss in Terraria that is like this. Really? That's interesting. I'm actually not fond of boss encounters that do this, because in my opinion, that's cheating you out of a boss. But when you just have a side mission like that, it's just fine. I mean, you, you still have to attack the boss as well. Oh, okay, that's different. There's a boss in Dynamite Hetty that's like that, called Twin Freaks. Very difficult boss. Anyway, as you can see, this has less requirements. You only need to get half as many. Ah. But it's actually, I'd say, tougher, because it's such a hectic level that it's harder to devote yourself to acquiring lums. Uh -huh. So by going through here, we have rescued Barbara, who is a barbarian, appropriately enough. So these like girl characters that you rescue, this is the equivalent of the fairies in this game. They're like the inhabitants of this world. I think that's the idea it's going for. Mm. Anyway, that is all for tonight, so good night, everybody. We'll see you next good time. Good night, everybody.